Hamilton's first race after signing the new contract with Mercedes did not end well, as the seven-time world champion got hit with a five-second penalty for causing a collision, but that wasn't the end of his woes in Monza. Not only this, but Toto Wolff seems to have finally admitted what we all knew basically from the start of the season, and it doesn't make Mercedes fans happy. Then again, what does this season? Let's take a look at the Monza race and why Hamilton's F1 accident was sanctioned not only by the race stewards, but also by FIA. It was a very bumpy race for Mercedes as they struggled to compete with the speed of the Red Bulls and Ferraris. At Monza, the team secured commendable P5 and P6 finishes, especially considering that W14 was the third fastest behind Red Bull and Ferrari. Russell started the race impressively, maintaining a P4 position early on and putting a sturdy defense against Perez. However, he ultimately yielded to the simply faster Red Bull. George went into the pits on lap 19 and despite a 5-second penalty during re-entry, managed his stint efficiently to prevent any positional losses. Contrarily, Lewis adopted a different strategy, initiating on the hard tire and extending his stint longer than most competitors as he made the switch to medium tires just past the midway point. Although he re-merged in P10, his pace allowed him to overtake Alonso swiftly and then set his sights on the contest between Albon and the McLaren duo. A minor collision with Piastri on lap 41 saddled him with a 5-second penalty. Still, the tire strategy provided him the advantage to overtake Norris and Albon for P6. He then established a sufficient lead to safeguard his spot in the final results and with today's performance, the team added 18 points, boosting their lead to 45 points over Ferrari, who is now to P3 in the Constructors' Championship after P3 and P4 finish from their drivers. Max Verstappen secured an unprecedented 10th straight F1 victory, successfully fending off a formidable challenge from Ferrari. This win extends Red Bull's flawless streak in the 2023 F1 season, and while there are still eight races left across diverse circuits, many are doubtful that they can even be stopped from achieving a win every race until the end. The last team to secure a victory not called Red Bull was Mercedes themselves, dating back to the Brazilian Grand Prix of the previous year, and Toto Wolff doesn't believe that any upcoming tracks present a better opportunity than Monza to stop Red Bull's dominance. I think they need to screw it up themselves in order not to win every race this season, said Wolf, who went on to suggest that it would be an impressive feat if Red Bull secured a perfect win haul. And by the way, that's a record I would think is a good one because that is perfection. We didn't make it because our two pushed each other out in Barcelona in 2016, and then we had an engine failure in Malaysia. Wolf's reference to the importance of the clean sweep record comes after he completely dismissed the value of Verstappen's 10th successive win at Monza. For me, these kinds of records are completely irrelevant, he said. They were irrelevant in our good days in Mercedes, and I don't know how many races we won in a row. I didn't even know that there was a count of how many races you win. Therefore, asking me for commenting on some achievement is difficult because it never played a role in my whole life. But the result itself shows that a great driver in a great car is competing on an extremely high level. In my opinion, this only shows that while Wolf is indeed admitting that only Red Bull can stop Red Bull from winning every race until the end, still the bitterness is there because a big rival is dominating like they did a few years ago. This is something that must bother Hamilton as well, who is powerless to see Verstappen cruising in second gear to another title, third in a row, while his record eighth is moving farther and farther away, and simply no competitor, especially one as fierce as Hamilton, could stay indifferent to that. Talking about Hamilton, he had many issues during the race, namely utilizing an alternate tire strategy. Hamilton was coming through the field and by lap 41 was challenging McLaren's Piastri for the 8th position with his fresher medium tires. At the second chicane, Hamilton overtook Piastri on the inside. However, he pushed the Australian towards the grass, leading to a collision between Hamilton's right rear tire and Piastri's front wing. 
Consequently, both drivers were forced onto the escape road, and Piastri then had to make an unscheduled pit stop to replace his damaged front wing, which cost him a finish in the points. For his role in the incident, Hamilton was handed a five-second penalty for triggering an avoidable crash. Nevertheless, this penalty did not affect his final position, and he secured sixth place. Afterwards, the seven-time world champion owned up to his mistake and apologized to Piastri for the incident. I apologize because it was obviously my fault, he said said, and it naturally wasn't intentional. I got up alongside and just misjudged the gap that I had to the right, clipped him. It could happen anytime. But I knew shortly afterwards it must have been my fault. I wanted to make sure he knew that it was not intentional. And that's what gentlemen do, right? And that wasn't the only problem for the seven-time world champion as an FIA investigation later reasoned. While overtaking Piastri at the entry to turn 4, Hamilton moved to the right in the braking zone and made contact with Piastri while Piastri was moving to the right away from him and was close to the side of the track. The outcome of the incident was a five-second time penalty for Hamilton. With two penalty points applied to his license, the legendary Britain's season tally has now increased to four for the season, moving him closer to but still within a safe distance of the 12-point maximum. Both Piastri, who also made contact with teammate Lando Norris and Alpha Tower's Liam Lawson in an action-packed afternoon, and the McLaren team principal Andrea Stella accepted Hamilton's apology and was keen to move on. Hamilton has quite the record of crashing into others when wheel to wheel. I mean, you can take his word that he didn't mean to, but it does show a blind spot in his racing, just like the many, many times he ruins other drivers' hot laps in practice. I also couldn't help noticing quite a few incidents in the first chicane that were incredibly similar to the Lewis Max one in 21, but had different ending and were judged differently, which is somewhat remarkable. Anyway, this was quite a bad weekend for Hamilton, his subpar driving both in quality and race, and his petty remarks regarding Max and their respective teammates did not look well, and took all the shine away from his so long anticipated contract extension. During Mercedes's years of dominance, success became second nature to Lewis Hamilton. However, the last couple of seasons have seen a downturn, with Hamilton experiencing a particularly challenging year last season, failing to secure a win. This decline came as Mercedes grappled with diminished competitiveness and despite these challenges, Hamilton's commitment to Mercedes remained unwavering. He recently confirmed a two-year contract extension, ensuring his stay with the team through 2025. Hamilton emphasized that he has unfinished goals with Mercedes and as he approaches the twilight of his F1 career, he wants to return to the forefront alongside the team that enabled him to clinch six of his seven world championships. Highlighting the team's commendable efforts, Hamilton pointed to their rebound from last year's problematic W13 to now possessing the grid's second most competitive car. Their relentless commitment to reviving their championship potential was a crucial factor in Hamilton's decision to stick with Mercedes. Undoubtedly, Mercedes and Hamilton are very much focused on restoring the winning tradition to the Silver Arrows and going back to seeking championship glory. This duo, historically synonymous with dominant wins, consistently led races from start to finish, but the sands of time spare no one. With each passing year, Hamilton inevitably ages, which might influence his performance abilities. For Mercedes, the anticipated 2026 engine regulations introduce a potential huge shift in the pecking order. The window of opportunity for both Hamilton and Mercedes is steadily narrowing, yet hope persists. What remains clear, though, is the need for flawless execution. Mercedes's bold venture into the zero sideboard aerodynamic concept ended up being more of a limitation, a sort of a dead end in their design journey. For Hamilton, given the heightened competition in modern F1, even minor lapses can have significant repercussions.